Uh, so, uh, right now I'm working as creative lead in UX practice in Photon Interactive. Before that, I have worked in Infosys for four years around as user experience designer. So, uh, that, that was my background. So, I have, I mean, I experienced quite a uh, quite times that in order to design those uh, interfaces which involved a lot of data is a challenge or is a kind of challenge for us. So how many of us experience that? You can raise hands. Okay. So if you are having, I mean, a lot of data in that screen, because if we talk about design, it, it should be, I mean, mixed up of content, form, behavior, everything, right? So what if, if we are going to have only the content, right? So let's deal with that problem and move ahead. So this uh, PPT is, I mean, not working. So yeah. So this is uh, certainly a spin talk of 15 minutes. So in that we will start with an introduction, short introduction, and uh, how do we see? So uh, how does it matter is that if we look at some object. So there is some process going on in our brain which include our eyes as well. So we will see that, that how do we see. Then how to design data visualization, what the design knowledge, what process we should follow. And because if we are talking about data visualization and if we are not talking about Tafte, that would be a crime. So we will see the thumb rules. Edward Tafte is a very known name in, in data visualization field. So he is considered to be a kind of father in data visualization. He has done a lot of experience to his life. So we'll uh, talk about that. And lastly, we'll talk about innovation because I believe that following the principles can uh, help us in finding a solution. But setting a new direction will always need innovation, right? So we'll talk about innovation or what uh, innovation we can bring in in data visualization. So, guys, you are able to hear me or is there any issue so that I can move forward? That's, That's right. not a problem. Okay. Yeah. This is. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I would like to start with that there has been a belief that everything is made up of atoms and it's, it's still the belief that everything is made up of atoms. Gradually that belief moved, I mean people tried or have started to change their opinions and not only thinking about atoms, but we have started thinking of uh, in the form of bits, right? That is everything is made up of zero and ones, right? So bits has resulted data, that is information data. There is a slight difference between information data, but yes we are in data age. So moving ahead, that we started from manufacturing age and we have come up to data age. So now let's welcome data age and let's welcome ourselves in data age. Yes, so uh, this is uh, considered to be one of the oldest data visualizations which was done by Minard. So Minard is also a, a kind of very known name and he is he has done a number of experiments throughout his life about data visualization. So what this diagram shows, can anyone guess? There is nothing to uh, read in this. So having smaller fonts is not a problem. Yeah, please. Uh, so I come across this uh, somewhere, uh, sometime back. I think it's a, it shows the army movement. Yes, sir. Yes, correct. So it's actually Napoleon's march towards Moscow. So his army started from there and reached towards Moscow. And it has shown that during their retreat, the size of the army is decreasing, which is shown in the black lines. Okay. Below that, we have we are having dates and uh, temperatures. So the reason of decrease in the numbers of the army is fall in the temperature, sudden fall in the temperature. 
So this is shown to to uh, just uh, just tell a story. Okay. So the primary purpose of data visualization is telling a story. So using this particular map, he has shown numerous things: size of the army. Then it it's uh, actually transposed on a map, which shows that how it uh, went to the Moscow, went to Moscow, and how it came back where some of the troops were uh, uh, are not uh, returning back actually and along with that temperature and the dates like on what date what is the size of the army so there are numerous dimensions of data we have shown here so we will talk more about this example later actually few images i have disappeared because of magic or something <laughs> Okay, so uh, right now what do we have is that we are having pool of data. I mean, we are all surrounded with numerous data on Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, everything. I mean, there are numerous data. So what is the need is that we should be able to somehow filter that data, which is very relevant for us. Or it purely depends on the reader or the user. So whatever user wants, only that needs to be shown. Right. So from that pool of data, some process should happen. We will talk about that. So that it will show us or it will, uh, or some kind of representation would be given for the reader, for the user, so that he can make the decisions which, which can make the user happier. Right. So this is the kind of I have tried to sketch. So this is the way in which we see it actually happens in three stages okay so first stage is the rapid parallel processing and this is combination of two stages so in rapid parallel processing what happens that we actually when we pass our glance through the object you have any question here no <laughs> yeah so uh, whenever we pass our glance uh, uh, on any object. So what happens that uh, we look for orientation, color, texture, and motion. Okay, so these are certain attributes on which uh, I mean we look for these attributes instantly without any uh, any attention to our brain. Okay, see this happens even before paying some attention uh, in order to look at an object. Okay. And pop-out effects are, uh, are again part of, you can say, motion and edges and regions in talk about that. So that's in detail. And thereafter, I mean, uh, it's slow serial goal directed processing. This happens in our brains. So after that, this is, I mean, uh, purely attentive uh, process that, that's, that goes on in brain. So in order to see some object. So take away from this idea is that orientation, color detection, motion are few attributes which we, we look for without any attention uh, from our brain. So I have shown here that color, size, position. So size and position is combinedly forming orientation. And the other one is motion. It's not flickering, I guess. So it's flickering, yes. So if, let's say, that we are going to have 50 this squares, black squares here, I mean on this slide, only 50 black squares on this slide, and one of them is flickering like this. So will it grab our attention? Yes. Of course, right? So this is pop-out effect. So this is also part of motion. So if some element is having motion, so it grabs our attention immediately without any uh, attention from our brain. So these are examples of those pre-attentive attributes. Now, how to design data visualization. So what are these? First one, this is part of poster of movie, right? So it's for Bollywood industry. This is the reader in which uh, uh, this is a very famous movie. Who won Oscars also. This is a Chinese movie. And coincidentally, we are having all these three terms, which are basically the three points 
which we must know this in order to design for data visualization. So what, what are goals? So there are two kinds of goals. First is, I mean, first is explanatory and second is explanatory. I will, I will just give one example for that. That uh, how many of us have opened our bank account page just to see our balance? And uh, I mean, number of times we log into our account and see our balance and be happy. And it's, it's, all, it's too much. It isn't like that, right? We have some purpose in order to uh, uh, see our account transactions. So some purpose we are having, then we log into our bank accounts, right? Yes. So that is kind of explanatory because we are having questions. Let's say that we can have the question that uh, on, on certain day, how much amount I have uh, taken out, right? Uh, how much amount I have withdrawn from my account. So that can be questioned in our mind and then we log into our account and see that this much amount was there and this was the transaction reason. Okay, so the question is there in our minds in, uh, even before seeing that data. So that is called explanatory. When we call explorative, that is, we are not having any question in our mind. We are looking at data. We are creating questions in our minds and then getting answers for that. So there are basically two kinds of goals. In explorative, we explore the data. We, uh, for example, uh, if we see a flight pattern across the globe between cities, so that's a kind of explorative data. We don't have any question for that. Okay? So these are goals we should identify for which we are going to design and then the reader who is the user who is using that data that also matters and even in reader context and identity these two attributes of the reader should be noticed. So what is context? Okay, I will first complete it because this is a screen talk. Yeah, so data. Now uh, how many dimensions of data do we have? which we need to uh, visualize that also goes uh, that will also go into the master first example which we show that was Miller's map it was having six dimensions of data that date, temperature, size of the army, size of the army during the retreat then the reason for the death or blah blah so these are dimensions so in order to show the uh, data visualization correctly we will have to fix on that how many dimensions we are going to show. And it's good to show, I mean, maximum number of or, or minimum or an optimal number of dimensions of data in a certain visualization. So this is a cheat sheet which was uh, designed by Andrew Abela. Okay. So this is very helpful in order to determine which particular data visualization we should use. Okay. So this is having that, what would you like to show? whether it's a relationship, because we may show a relationship between two variables, which is also visualized. <coughs> whether it's a distribution, composition, comparison, so a number of data visualization and its types. This is very useful chart, which, which was designed by Avila, which we can use for data visualization. Now we are uh, gradually moving towards the test principles. So this is first principle of Edward Tufte. So the principle says that the ratio of data and the ink should be very close to one. So what does that mean is that we are having data, right? So in order to show that data, we will be using inks, right? Or inks can be used to show the data, to decorate the data, to show related uh, pictorial views which are, which are also connected with the data. So how uh, it will be good to show as much as data as you can through that ink. So the uses of ink and uses of I mean, uh, visualization of data, this ratio should be very close to one. That will be an indication of good data visualization. This is the second concept which says that number of data matrices. These uh, I mean, number of data matrices, uh, it's, it's getting close. Yeah, 
So I mean, this is just the numbers that uh, uh, it depends on how many numbers of data you can show in a certain area. That's a good indication of the data visualization again. And yes, this is a, this is an image which shows that this guy is sitting in a very uh, uh, in the middle of the sea. So here you can't see or you can't imagine that this is the sea in which that guy is sitting, right? So, with the loss of frame of reference, we can lie to someone. We can easily lie to someone. So, if we are going to show some data, we should always have a frame of reference. Okay. Yeah, so, this was the example. And interactions are, are the very important part of data visualization. And this is the last one, the gist of this whole discussion. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>